Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to define regular expressions, when you should use them, and then show some examples. Regular expressions. As we talk about what regular expressions are and when they are of value, we will show some basic examples to illustrate the various types of regular expressions. We will also discuss a few of the common libraries which have implemented regular expressions and why you might want to use a particular one. A regular expression is simply a mechanism for matching a specific pattern of text. The regular expression language provides a concise and flexible way to identify a particular pattern. Since there is a grammar and a syntax defining how regular expressions are interpreted, they constitute a language. There are two well-established industry standards which define syntax and functionality for regular expressions. As part of the POSIX standard, a set of regular expression libraries are defined, and there is also the Perl-compatible regular expression syntax. So why are regular expressions of value? Regular expressions are used in lexical analysis, which is the first part of parsing. Another example of where you might use regular expressions is in an editor. Most editors used by programmers have a way to define the syntax highlighting, and this is done using a regular expression. Another example is if you're setting up an email server and you want to blacklist certain sources of email. This is often done with a regular expression. In all of these examples, the software must be designed to read the regular expression in a configuration file or by user input and parse it accordingly. Another common place where you might use regular expressions as a user is in a text editor, for example, in the search function in your programmer's editor. It is also common for a program to use regular expressions to validate user input to ensure it meets a certain format. For example, a phone number, a postal code, or a date, these all have well-defined formats that they need to be in in order to be valid. It is not advisable to use a regular expression in some cases. When you are parsing input which is not a regular language, like HTML or XML, you cannot use a regular expression to accomplish this task. You need a real parser. It is also unnecessary and perhaps wasteful to use a regular expression when a simple string function could be used instead. For example, if all you are doing is testing whether two strings match, your string library likely provides an equality comparison. These are the two main abstractions which specify the syntax and grammar for regular expressions. Most implementations will be based on one of these two standards, but there is no requirement that a particular regular expression engine implement the standard in full. It is common to omit obscure features or ones the library did not have a need to add. This may seem arbitrary, and it is. Regular expression libraries take a lot of liberties on what features they want to provide. A regular expression is defined as a pattern which uses various grammar rules and literal characters. The pattern must be formatted precisely, just as any other code in your program. The pattern is also called the regex. This regex is applied to the search text to test if there is a match. If the pattern is complicated, the regex may match in places you did not expect, which can make debugging very challenging. A regular expression library provides the functionality to do a regex, but most do not test the validity of your pattern, and they do not provide debugging tools. The source code we write in our programs has grammatical and syntactical rules which give it meaning. If you want to write a for loop, you need to understand the syntax and meaning of each part. Otherwise, the compiler may just laugh at you or misunderstand your intent. The same is true of regular expressions. 
There are four basic categories which define the types of grammar you can use to set up a regex pattern. These categories are present in all regex implementations. However, the syntax may differ slightly. Matching a literal character is the simplest type of regex. If all you are doing with your pattern is matching literals, then usually a regex is unnecessary. This could usually be handled by some type of string comparison. The grammar for a character class is denoted by square brackets. As a convenience, there are a variety of predefined shortcuts for commonly used character classes. This means that both R3 and R4 will have the same result. They are both regular expressions that will match any single digit between 0 and 9. Example 4 can be written in another way, using the raw string syntax introduced in C++11. This yields R5. This syntax allows you to use a single backslash rather than doubling each backslash. R6 will match any three-digit number sequence, like 234. R7 is the same pattern as R6, but is easier to read, since in the raw string literal, extra backslashes are omitted. As your regex gets more complicated, this syntax is very helpful for readability. Quantifiers are another type of grammar category. They allow you to simplify the regex when you are looking for repeated patterns. The star and the plus are very similar. The star matches zero or more times, while the plus matches one or more times. In the R8 example, the question mark will match any string which has zero or one R's. We will match on CA and CAR. With the added star, it will also match any string like cat or C-A-T-T with any number of T's. Groups are part of the regular expression grammar, but not associated with the four categories of rules. They are used to identify a section of the regex which can be captured. They are also used to apply a quantifier to the text in the group. As an example, grouping can be used to identify some portion of text to search for and then replace the match using the captured group. A good string library should have a regex replace function, which allows you to capture and replace in one pass. In the R9 example, the letters AN form a group, and as a side effect, it will be captured, even though we're not using the capture in this example. The plus quantifier modifies this group to indicate it must match one or more times. Assertions are a type of rule which match at a specific place in the text. The two most common are the caret and the dollar sign. These assertions change behavior based on which options you pass to your regular expression library. The default in most regular expression engines is to assume the text contains a single line. Given the example in R10, the text Bob would only match if it appears at the very beginning of the search text. If your library has a multi-line option and you enable it, then this regex will match the word Bob if it is preceded by a new line in the middle of the search text. The regular expression syntax defined by the POSIX standard and the Perl compatible syntax are both well-established industry standards. The challenge of understanding and using regular expressions is that engines or libraries often do not implement every feature, and they also add other functionality they deem necessary. There is no standard for what is contained in a particular regular expression library. What functionality ends up being supported in any given library is subject to the choices made by the developers. Asking what is the correct set of functionality to support and what is the functionality you can safely use in your program is kind of like asking what is the best style of pizza. There are definite standards 
for a New York style pizza versus a Chicago style pizza versus an Italian style pizza. However, they are all considered pizza, and even in a particular region, there will be slight variations from a particular restaurant to another. If you're new to regular expressions, it's useful to know that this metaphor also applies. It's not enough simply to read a standard and learn that definition of regular expressions. It's also very important to read the documentation for the specific engine or group of engines you may be using. While there is a certain core set of functionality that most implementations agree on, the details can differ greatly. The implementation of regular expressions is easy to get wrong. You really should be using an existing regex library rather than writing your own from scratch. PCRE is very widely used and adheres closely to the Perl language implementation of regular expressions. Unfortunately, it's a C library, and the API is a bit awkward to use with C++. Boost Regex has been around for quite some time, and the C++ standard library incorporated a large portion of the Boost Regex library nearly verbatim. This was added in C++ 11. RE2 is a library by Google, which omits several of the common regular expression features, so it can safely be used with untrusted user input. We needed a regular expression library for Copper Spice and chose to base it on Boost Regex. It appeared to give us the ability to override the string type. Sadly, while the Boost Regex library allows you to provide your own type trait class and even requires you to specify the string type, you cannot override the string type in your traits class. So both the Boost Regex library and STD Regex force you to use STD basic string. This didn't work for us. In Copper Spice, strings are implemented using our CS string Unicode aware library, which defines its own string type. We had to enhance the Boost Regex library to support a user defined string type. The full source code for our regular expression engine is part of our CS Core library. The Q regular expression template allows any string type to be used, which means as a new policy class is added to support another encoding, the regular expression library does not need to change. The source on GitHub was updated recently and more changes are pending as we expand our regular expression support. The regular expression source is located in our repository on GitHub in source core string regex. We are changing some of the options in the Q regular expression class as we add more functionality to our regular expression library. The current documentation for Q regular expression can be found on our website. You may also want to read the documentation for QString8, which has several methods which take a regex as a pass parameter. For more information about Q regular expression, as well as any of our other libraries, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in two weeks for our next video.